I'm making a special trip today to the new Rough Meadows Wildlife Sanctuary, recently acquired by Massachusetts Audubon Society. We're along Route 1A in Rowley. There's another working farm right over there. And there's another adjoining property called Minister's Woodlot that's under the jurisdiction of the Essex National Heritage Area. It dates back to 1660. This is Stackyard Street in all its glory. And I'll be walking it up to Patmos Street, which then brings us to the various array of properties associated with the Great Marsh. That's Great Marsh Preservation is what this is all about. Yeah, we have Essex County Greenbelt's sensible variations on the theme of rules. Pretty much the sort of thing you run into everywhere. <laughs> variations on the theme of don't be an idiot. You can't have fires, don't dump stuff. Keep your motorized contraptions out of here. No target shooting or hunting without permission or trespassing after dark. And carry out your trash, clean up after your mutt. See, they allow dogs. Use between sunrise and sunset only. Other things may be permitted, but require that you contact, first contact the office. Good old Essex County Greenbelt. Every county should have such a thing. And this overlooks Minister's Woodlot. I'll investigate it further later. For now, I'm heading up to Sawyer's Island at the end of Patmos Road. The town of Rowley also lets you know that it's not particularly enthused about hunting other than through written permission of landowner. But if you screw up somehow, you only got to pay a 20 buck fine. Sheesh. And of course, Mass Audubon is the ultimate word when it comes to thoughtful signage. Here's our Patmos Road intersection. And as soon as you're there, you have a Mass Audubon confidence boosting sign indicating, yes, you're on your way to Rough Meadows. And look at what a cool quasi-rural road net Stackpole and Patmos are. It's fairly evident that we're in a quiet place. Got the fine solitary shagbark hickory with a bird house on it. A particular bird, but I'm sure it's well thought out. So this is the open area where there's a trail to spot kestrels and raptors. This looks towards Route 1A. This heads up towards the parking lot where we'll end up momentarily. And you can see why land preservation people are excited. This is a pretty vast vista. You can also see the tide beginning to recede from its high point. Those plants with the splash of red actually have an interesting property of being able to process brackish salty water. So they're a common plant here in the salt marsh community. I forget their name, but I'll surely look it up. Great splash of kind of a magenta. And 
this is huge. See, the vista stretches all this way. Some more color breaking out from fall. Here, Patmos Road heads back towards Route 1A. And here we are heading off towards Sawyer's Island. Birdhouse. The vastness of vistas off in the distance. 20,000 acres all told and then some. In some odd little spot. I have a feeling it might be part of the Parker River system. And so you have this granite bench thing. And then you have this abandoned, strange little slowly decaying cabin. I could live in a thing like this. This is really. All I want out of the world. No McMansions for me, thank you. Look at this thing. Probably dates back to the 70s. I bet you it was a place where you'd go duck hunting. It's pretty whipped now. I had a stove once. People probably come here for Odd liaisons, who knows? But there's some abandoned propane tanks out back. Simple structure. There's the old stovepipe. Quite a little cabin. Quite a little lot. Yeah, I could live in something like that with minimal fuss. And lo and behold, I'm here at Sawyer's Island. This is the sort of parking turnaround. There's also a private home adjacent to the parcel and what a fine private home it is. Yet another example of peaceful coexistence with homeowners in genteel places. So this is where Patmos Road brings you. This little trail leads out to a canoe launch on the Parker River. Oak leaves are waving their way groundward. Completely stunning little parcel. Pride and joy of the completely stunning Essex County Greenbelt Association. An all-around cordial bunch. It's a pretty straight-ahead trail. From what I can tell, there are an assortment of these little hummocks of arable land amidst these vast march marshes. And little home holdings came to rise. Little isolated outermost houses poked out into the salt marsh. Places to get away. It's kind of an overcast day. In a way, it works well, lends a sense 
of the dramatic to this early autumn day. There's an Atlantic white cedar hanging in there. Hear the whistle of the wind. Lo and behold, we're arriving at the canoe launch and a somewhat scary looking Parker River at high tide. It's such a small thing, but at its mouth, it looks bigger than the Charles. Oh wow, there's some bubbling water over there. Some kind of tidal disturbance. Look at that. This is where you'd put your canoe in. Ah, I see a white heron or an egret of some kind. They got a lot of room here. You can hardly see much of anything in the way of homes other than little scattered clusters here and there. The monarch butterfly or something. They got out the welcome sign for you. If you put your canoe in here. Completely outstanding. It's about a, as good a viewpoint of the outer sections of this great marsh. Parker River estuary is you're likely to run into.